Look, if you have to use the cruiser to stop a fleeing felon, do it with authority. Hi friends, welcome to today's bonus badge cam lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. And I'm your co-host, Mike Willover. Today's video comes to us from North Olmsted, Ohio. MagTech is the only pistol or rifle ammo I use on the range and I recommend them highly. I've seen their manufacturing and quality control firsthand and it's incredible, which is why it always performs reliably and accurately. They are operating at max capacity and cranking out rounds for you to keep your skills sharp. Pick up some MagTech at your local ammo retailer or get it shipped fast at luckygunner.com. This one begins with surveillance footage from the PD of an armed robbery in progress. This guy is a prohibited possessor who has a long criminal history, uh, including just getting out of jail for an armed robbery uh, not too long before. I know that's shocking to people. So the manager is going to give him a bunch of bags full of stuff of register. The police uh, saw him, got a 911 call out. This Actually, that Starbucks was literally across the street from the police department. So they start after this guy, sees this guy who matches his description, who is running down the street with a bag of loot and a gun. Let's listen into the dash cam. The officer was not hit by that gunfire. The perp was not hit by the return fire from the officer. He did get in another vehicle, drive off. Police chased him to an apartment complex where eventually they got him into custody. He is, of course, facing a corn plethora of charges. No one else was harmed, and there's a few lessons out of this one. Hey, if you want to get some thoughts on the moral and legal use of the cruiser or a car for self-defense, go over to Active Self Protection Extra. We have a whole playlist called John's Briefs where we talk about legal and moral self-defense, including this stuff. I share the armed robbery again, Mike. I, I do think that as private citizens, either comply fully or resist fully. There's a number of private citizens who should have and could have stopped this in, in a minute. If there's a concealed carrier here, fill this guy in in the back. There's a bunch of people he's not paying attention to. Could have ended this very quickly. But let's think about the officer stuff now. They've, they've got a description of this guy and he drives right by. So you got to think, hey, this is an, still an active armed robber who's fleeing in the immediate aftermath of his actions. And, you know, I think at this point, it, you know, it takes you a moment to kind of get your, your bearings about you. I know he's in route to this. I don't know how far away we are from uh, the crime scene or the robbery. If it was reasonable for him to assume, well, this must be my guy. But this is clearly your guy now. And he's running down the street. Uh, let's see, he's carrying, he's dressed all in black with a hoodie on, he's carrying a bag full of crash registers, and he's got a gun in his right hand. So I think at this point, we can uh, reasonably infer Tennessee versus Garner being uh, invoked here, that, that this is this is our bad guy, and that we need to do something to stop him, that he's actively dangerous to us and the rest of the community. So he's just threatened a whole bunch of people with a firearm, has uh, committed an armed robbery, is in active fleeing from that armed robbery into the community, and you can see all around there are businesses and residences so, so is this guy an objective, reasonable threat of imminent death or violence to the community? That's that standard of Tennessee versus Garner. And I think the answer to that is unequivocally yes. So therefore, deadly force is acceptable, justified, and good in order to, to take this guy into custody. Remember, we're talking about police stuff here. We're not talking about private citizen stuff in terms of when we use deadly force. We're talking about using it in crime prevention here. Uh, in this particular one. So then he's got the car here, but he just kind of gives him a little love tap. And, and I know we've had several of these on the channel, Mike, that we see, you know, we've seen one where he used that, the, the car when he probably shouldn't have, but several others when he did. If you're justified to use the car, use the car and actually at least hit this guy hard enough to get the gun out of his hand and knock his shoes off. And that's the problem, John. It's not something you practice. I mean, it's not something you practice. And I think the officer probably thought, well, I could just knock this guy down and then he'll be disabled for long enough for me to go and, and get him. The fact is, you wouldn't, in the same way you wouldn't try to shoot someone in the leg, a fleeing felon in the leg to wound them and have, make them stop, uh, you don't hit somebody with a car to, to injure them. You, you hit somebody with a car to stop them. And to stop them, you have to be going a little bit faster than he was going. I, I'm not sure why he hesitated here, but this was not going to get the job done. I mean, again, if, if your goal is, hey, I want to stop this guy from running, okay, probably the car is not the right choice. If I'm going to stop this guy as a deadly threat to the community, 
you got to use more of the car. And the reason for that is exactly what we see here. Mm. You just nudge him a little bit and now the bullets start. Now, I think, I'm not positive here, Mike, but I think our officer, when the guy starts shooting at him, bails out of the car and that's why the, the car keeps moving forward. But, you know, when we were first looking at this one, you said, why didn't he drop that, that accelerator pedal to the floor right here? And, and we say this for private citizens, and I think that for officers too, sometimes hunkering down, hitting the accelerator, and using the cruiser is a better choice than bailing. It sounds like, I'm just guessing here, John, I'm, I'm, this is all uh, speculative on my part, but I, I think probably what happened is he hit the guy, figured, oh, well, he's knocked down, he's out of the fight for a second, that'll give me an opportunity to jump out of my car, go bring him into custody. So, I mean... He was he was trying to do the right thing here. The, the fact is that that hit wasn't wasn't enough. If I'm still in my car here, if this guy stands back up again, I'm hitting the right pedal. I'm hitting the accelerator pedal, and I'm putting him down because we're not going to wait around for him to shoot at us. Well, it turns out that's just what he did as soon as he popped up. Was started blazing rounds off at this officer. And of course, on this last one, okay, the guy did you know drop all of his loot like Sonic getting hit in the video game, right? But now he runs off, and our officer does return fire at him a little bit but he does so ineffectively. So this is my call to officers as well. Again, they did end up getting this guy into custody, but he's gonna to continue to be a threat until you put him down. So that's why on that day, marksmanship is so important.